Thank you and good morning, everyone. Um, firstly, I'd like to also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to elders past and present. So, um, our project um, was a project through the Cancer Australia and was supporting people with cancer um, grant initiative. It was led by the Kerry's now disappeared. Um, led by the Lung Foundation Australia in collaboration with Hume Rix, uh, which is Hume Regional Integrated Cancer Services, and I'm based um, in Wodonga. And this project um, started in June 2012, and it was just completed um, in May. So the project we um, spoke about, do I have to say click to? Um, <laughs> So yeah, so let's yarn with the Aboriginal community in Albury Wodonga about cancer prevention, early diagnosis and better outcomes. And the team, um, there was Robin Sharman, Kerry, oh there you are, um, Kerry Callahan from the Lung Foundation, hi Kerry. Um, there was a service improvement facilitator, uh, was Paula Fraser, who was no longer with us, and um, <coughs> myself. So I was initially employed as, in one day, as one day a week. Um, couldn't get much done in one day a week, so I sort of said to Robin, who then took it up to Kerry, we need to have some more time. So um, again, we spoke with Kerry and we were able to get me um, working two days a week <coughs> um, so I could get out there a bit more and do uh, some more things, I guess. So, so we're looking at the um, Border East Hume Cancer Network. Again, on the right side there, we're known as the Border East um, Hume. And then when we go out to the west, which takes in Shepparton, um, Benalla, Seymour, around that area, so again, because Albury Wodonga is a border town, we, um, we are lucky enough, I suppose, in some sense, um, to be able to cross over. Um, we had trouble for many years looking at funding bodies where they were just looking at, you can't work across the river, we only fund New South Wales and vice versa. Um, we as a community, we say that we are one community so we were saying, we don't see that river as a divide, it's the giver of um, life. So, you know, we kept trying to stress that to, um, to funding bodies. Um, so it seems to be working and sometimes it's an advantage being on the border because you can get the best of both. So use it to your advantage when you can. So next one. <coughs> so again, this is sort of taking out um, looking into the New South Wales side. So um, again, we can go out to Holbrook, uh, right up to Barham, Dunaliquin, Cumragunja. We do have health workers in Hay, Narandra, Leeton as well. Even though that's not supposed to be in our area, we do liaise closely with the other Aboriginal health workers in that area. Because to, um, I was a health worker for many years, um, so I see the importance um, that health workers play in our community, that we are often the liaison officer, mediator, whatever, negotiator. So it's important to keep them in the loop and know what um, they are able to provide. So again, <coughs> within the project, we were looking at um, some of the signs and symptoms and, of course, we said cancer is a chronic disease. Um, it never used to be. It was always diabetes um, and other um, illnesses. So it's great to see that cancer, not great in that sense, but um, that it is now something that we can you know, work more closely on. And it is the second largest cause of death in the indigenous uh, population. The inc incident rate of cancer is higher for Indigenous people, and we keep hearing that, and we've heard that over the last um, day or so. Um, most cancers in Indigenous people that are high incidence are normally preventable, again, if we get there early. Indigenous Australians have poor outcomes 
after a cancer diagnosis. And I think we were sort of normally looking at that is that Aboriginal people um, present later. So that's one of the reasons for that. Um, <clears throat> This here sort of relates to um, my co-worker, Robin, who is holidaying overseas, and I think she's in, um, she took one of those train trips that was taken up about 28 days, and she's in the middle of it, somewhere around Budapest or somewhere now. But as I said, before I started, um, Robin had been working in health, and she is a, one of the resource nurses. Um, she'd been working in that area for a number of years, and she was sort of looking at it as um, if the incident, incidence of cancer is high in the Aboriginal population, and over those years that she was working, she was wondering why they've only supported um, three Aboriginal patients in those, you know, those five years. So it sort of got her thinking, I guess, um, so who was providing that support? Where were they going? So I think that was sort of the start of um, something bigger. So next. So the project aims, um, and along with Robin's theories, um, we needed to look at um, providing education about cancer and their treatments to the um, Orbi Wodonga crew. We are looking at developing key messages looking at the signs, symptoms, and the risks. Again, it was to provide information on local services um, in our area, to develop Aboriginal-specific um, resources. Again, those um, resources are the DVDs or the pins that are on the card that's on the Lung Foundation table outside. Um, and it was to provide information on how to access supportive care. So we had to sort of look at um, how we can take this a bit further because it, it wasn't an area that we um, did a lot of work on initially. Um, as I said, there were other things. <coughs> so we were looking at um, how can we engage um, with the Indigenous community. And I think the first one that we um, had, we, we'd set up a program and it was a Well Women's, again, it was some funding that was received. Um, so we had a Well Women's workshop uh, where we had guest speakers and the, and the target at that stage was, um, was breast cancer. So, and again, with what Robin was thinking of how do we engage, uh, who do we look for? So it was important that you needed to look at, um, you need to feel the passion. Um, or you need to be passionate about what you're doing. And I guess Robin was sort of starting to um, grasp that idea. And then she was saying she needed to look at and identify key people or a person um, in your community that you could work with. That she also um, thought, you don't just go at once, give up, and you know, I can't reach anyone, can't, um, can't engage. So you have to be persistent. You have to keep trying. And you also have to look at the integrity and the honesty of the person and your people that you're working with. <coughs> Again, some of the key messages that we, um, we looked at, um, of course, the risk was, and these were only the messages that we sort of looked at and thought, yeah, well, these <coughs> are the ones we will target in on. Of course, smoking, um, the passive smoking, asbestos exposure, then we looked at the symptoms. Again, these have been um, discussed over the last day or so. And I liked um, Professor Irving's comment, is I'm listening to all the coughs around the room. I thought that was quite good. So um, I tend to do that a little bit too. So persistent cough, coughing up blood, feeling tired, or feeling more tired than, than usual, unexplained weight loss, and shortness of breath. So of course some of the actions, and again this is where I always um, promote the Aboriginal health workers because they're the person, um, you know, normally you don't, or some families may not have a support person that are comfortable enough to go along with them. 
but you do have a health worker that you um, hopefully can you know, tap into. So the actions were go to your doctor if you've got any of these signs or symptoms and see you. <laughs> what a G. <laughs> um, so some of the project delivery, I'll keep moving and talk quicker then. So we, um, again, it was like Rod, um, we established, or there was established um, a steering group which was to, to guide the project. Again, community activities, um, education sessions to health workers. Our first one um, was just after I'd started in conjunction with Kerry. We, we had our first Shine a Light on Lung Cancer um, awareness event. Um, and that's where we, we, um, we launched um, our first DVD, which was actually my mother's um, story, and it was her experience of um, her journey of being diagnosed with lung cancer. Um, and it was in relation to, came in the right time, we, we did it with a good event, and that was, um, we also had the shine a light on um, the Sapphires movie, so, um, which it was made in Albury, Wodonga, so it made it even, you know, a bit more special. So they were some of the photos in the next slide. So within the steering group, we'll stay there. Um, again, we've had, and it's chaired by an Aboriginal health worker, who's Kelly, and thanks to Kelly, who's sitting in the room. Kelly's a chronic care um, worker with um, Mungabarine Aboriginal Corporation. We also have other, we have about eight Aboriginal health workers working in various roles across the border. And we have two um, Aboriginal consumer members. Um, and we have seven to 10, the numbers vary, um, that come and go from other mainstream um, services. So some of the project activities, of course. Next slide. Again, one of the things that we are looking at doing, um, supporting chronic disease nurse at the health service sort of works closely with us at that time. Um, but what we're doing now is we're working with the Aboriginal health workers and in, in we're putting them in placements in each of those areas, so radiation, oncology, palliative care and breast screen. So each of those services, um, we're placing the Aboriginal health workers in them. Um, but we also have education sessions with them beforehand um, particularly in um, chemo and, and radiation. <coughs> Next. Again, some of the different activities. There's some of our health workers at a um, forum that we had, and we had about 65 um, community members that come to attend an education centre session, rather. And again, some of our... Next. Um, there's some of the ladies that attended the sessions, um, some of the things that we discussed. I'll just keep going over quickly. Again, one of the, um, so these were just some of the shots from our Shine a Light um, events, a couple of the original sapphires. Um, so that was a great night. We had around 350 people attend, I think. <coughs> Next. Again, that's um, some of those resources. That's the pin. Again, we were looking at, um, in the project, I was, a little light went on and I thought, there is no pin to identify that Aboriginal people get cancer too. So we have kins for all sorts of other things. So this is the um, pin that was um, designed and it's now attached to the, um, the little card out. And again, you'll find them outside. So thank you. And that's the messages that's on the card. Next. So again, these are just some of the places um, that we distributed some of those things to. Of course, we went um, to local. Then it's, it's like um, Slim Dusty's song. They've gone everywhere. Um, so next. So again, these are just some of the feedback on um, some of the health workers' comments. Um, and it's great because, again, you know, it's a, it was a new area, so they were saying bring on more education. They're wanting to know more about cancer and, and where they can tap uh, people into. Um, and again, it was good 
medical oncologists were also saying, um, we are now seeing more Aboriginal people, so they are presenting. One of the other things that we work with within our radiation centre in uh, Victoria, it's a private practice, so we've sort of had to do a little bit more work. Um, and I guess it's probably good with me knowing the Aboriginal community and Robin knowing the cancer centres and the services, we were able to um, make a, a better inroad, I suppose, to the cancer services. Um, so what's happening there with them as well is we're doing a cultural awareness um, session with them over, um, we're doing three sessions at radiation and three sessions at oncology. Again, it, because it's private, they don't have to do it. They wanted to do it, so, um, so that's also a good thing. Sustainability. Um, so of course for the Aboriginal health workers, uh, they'll further develop their skills and the knowledge um, and confidence to discuss the treatment and care of a patient. Um, we've had four Aboriginal health workers also do the um, TAE training, um, so the CERT 4, again. Um, I'll go to Kelly. Kelly has just graduated and um, got her certificate last week, so she's able to um, be called upon to go and do some programs and <coughs> talks to community. Um, again, we've had four successful PEPA trainings uh, sessions. Our last one, uh, we had 40 people attend over at uh, Moama Ichuka. And, and again, we had seven of those um, presenting at that time were Aboriginal um, people. So uh, it's good to see Aboriginal people getting up and um, you know, taking charge. So again, it's also the knowledge of cancer and treatments, um, and of course, strengthen networks and partnerships um, and improve collaboration. Done that. We also, some of you might be aware that um, there was a two to country boys team arrived from Wollongong last year and um, they were promoting men's health. So again, that was great to see. We were able to tap in with them and, and made the focus um, to ride a bike and to ride that far, you need healthy lungs. So um, again, we were able to promote that. And the next one, we, um, we've been successful in um, another project and it's yarning along the river. So we'll be um, working closely with Dunalakwan and Kamraganja, which are isolated communities. We again are looking at um, getting health workers in to those services, as well as looking at um, pathways. Um, if they're diagnosed in Dunalakwan or Kamra, where do they go? Often um, the client doesn't have a choice. They're told by the doctor that we need you to go here. Um, and so they often do, but um, you know they could go between. Some could come to Albury, some could go to Bendigo, some are sent to Melbourne um, or Echuca. Again, we're trying to educate the per, uh, the person and family members that it's your choice. You have a choice in where you want to go, so um, that's what we're trying to educate um, and giving them some other ideas and options on. You know, they don't have to go that way, um, that often, um, yeah. <laughs> so just educating them a bit more, and it's about their choice. So again, um, we just engaged with um, community members, met with CEOs um, of those services, um, the managers, um, different number of different partners and you'll see those um, at the end. Um, we've met with palliative care team and again it's been great. We've had health workers going in um, and working alongside the palliative care nurses and doing home visits with them as well. So they're getting hands on. Um, one of the things we're also working with, um, we've got the CERT4 Aboriginal Health Workers course happening so we're working with them to um, give them some of those placement hours so that's um, you know, a benefit to them as well. Again, we've discussed that, so that's good. It's all done. Thanks. Again, they're just some of the things that I've discussed. Um, yep. 
some of the challenges. We all have challenges and, and they're just um, some of the things that uh, we found. Um, placements are still progressing. Um, the links are getting bigger. Um, but what we try to do is we know that um, there are all sorts of different programs happening in places. We don't try and make a different one. We try and tag on to something that's already happening so that it's not too many things happening. These were some of our partners. So um, our Aboriginal Health Service, Mungab, which is over in Victoria, the Viney Morgan Aboriginal Medical Service out at Kamragunja, um, of course our local health district and Gateway Community Health. Thanks. <laughs>